Hi, I'm Trish Floor from the Department of Recreation here in Coronado. Coming up next on Coronado TV, we're going to be teaching you how to make all of these lovely mocktails. Hope to see you soon. Hello everyone, welcome to another holiday virtual event brought to you by the City of Coronado Department of Recreation. We have quite a few um, online uh, events happening this year that are safe, fun and free. And this episode is going to be um, making mocktails. So before we get started, there's a couple things I wanted to point out. Um, I prefer to use the weighted Boston shakers, but you can use the ones that you find at home that have the, the cap and the strainer already in it. Um, I also prefer to use these types of jiggers, but there's also a Japanese jigger that has the two sides and has all of the lines on the inside. Um, and you can also find jiggers that look like little mini um, cups <laughs> and they have the markings on the inside as well. Um, we're going to be doing five mocktails for you today. The first one is going to be a spirit free painkiller. This comes out of Wright and Company out of Detroit. Um, if you've ever been to a tiki bar, you know what the real painkiller is, and it's a very, very strong rum drink, but we're going to be doing it without that. All right, so we're going to start with this. We're going to do one ounce of pineapple. All right, and there we go. We're going to do three quarter ounces of orange juice. I always prefer fresh squeezed. Um, that's right, three ounces of coconut. Got everything set up here. Coco Lopez, always good for these types of drinks. She's a little... We got it online, so I wasn't sure of the <laughs> expiration date on that one. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna do a half ounce of lime. Okay, and then quarter ounce of raspberry syrup. We don't have a quarter ounce, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our bar spoon and two bar spoons are about a quarter ounce. So don't fret. And with the raspberry syrup, just look up a recipe. Um, it's usually one to one um, sugar and water and then the fruit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and shake, shake, shake this baby. And you will develop your own personal shape type. Okay, now we're going to get our tulip glass here. Glassware doesn't really matter. So you feel free to choose what you'd like. All right, and we're going to strain this. It's supposed to be crushed ice so it would fill the glass a little bit more. You can also double the recipe. Mm -hmm. I didn't try it out with these new glasses that I got, so that's why it's a little bit on the low side. Um, and so for our garnish, we're gonna do an orange flag. Be very, very careful when you're doing these flags so you don't peel yourself. The technique is hold your thumb here, top, and then pull down. Okay. Now you always wanna express and put it around the rim just so you get that nice orange flavor. And it called for a uh, pineapple frond, but I didn't have fresh pineapple, right? So I just made a fun little cucumber thing and pretty little orchid. So our next mocktail is going to be the emoji and that's coming out of uh, the Penrose in New York City. Um, so what we're gonna, this is actually gonna be using cold brew coffee, um, which I got this morning from my friends at Dark Horse Roasters. I would suggest that you pick one of your favorite coffee shops and, uh, you know, try and keep it here on the island. So, let me to make it easier to pour here. Okay, so we're going to do one and a half ounces of cold brew. And then 
passion fruit puree. I accidentally got infused syrup, so make sure you get the puree because your cocktails will turn out a little bit too sweet. Okay, we got three quarter ounce of that guy. And then another three quarter ounce orgeat. I did buy this online. Um, you can make it yourself with almond milk. Um, the traditional way is to soak almonds and then you also add uh, apricot kernels to it. If you ever drink tiki drinks, usually orgeat is involved. So then there's that. And then half ounce of lemon, fresh squeezed of course. You know what? I just realized I didn't put enough coffee in, so I'm just gonna do that real quick. Okie doke. So we're gonna do the shakes again. Again, you will develop your own technique. All right. Always wanna get all that good stuff in there. Another Yeah, that looks nice. Very nice. Okay. So for this guy I saved a couple of the raspberries, so I'm gonna garnish it with that. We're gonna do a nice little lime wedge and just a sprinkle of cinnamon. Oh well, pretend I'm cinnamoning. I forgot to take the tab off. <laughs> so that is the emoji. Our next mocktail is going to be Dr. Pepo's Tonic, and that's coming out of Cultivare in Houston. Um, and this cocktail, we're going to be doing some muddling. Um, so we we'll definitely need a muddler. And we're going to do six to eight uh, mint leaves and one cucumber. So we're just going to lightly press on that. Don't need to completely emacerate the whole thing, but you just want to get all that nice flavor out of there, right? Then we're going to do three quarter ounce coconut shrub. And if you look up the recipe for any type of shrub, you can do fruits, vegetables, herbs. It's going to be equal parts of uh, white vinegar, um, apple cider vinegar, sugar, a little bit of salt, and then whatever flavoring you want. So I went and had to made this ahead of time. All right. So we're doing three quarter ounce of the shrub. And then half ounce lemon, half ounce lime. That one's leaky. And just a pinch of salt. Okay. And then of course, we're gonna shake. We can actually just use this glass. prefer a taller glass for this one. Okay. I might actually double that recipe next time. And then tonic water. Um, we're using Q tonic and Q ginger beer for our next cocktail, mocktail. Um, you can use whatever you'd like. There's also a really good brand called Fever Tree. Yeah, that's gonna be delish, okay. So we're going to garnish that with a cucumber slice and a mint sprig. You're always going to want to express that mint out of there just a little bit so that when your guest goes to drink it, they can have that nice aroma. Dr. Peppo's tonic. Okay, our next mocktail is going to be a passion fruit mule, and that's from Against All Grains. Um, the original recipe called for mango puree, but since we already have the passion fruit, I figured we just substitute it in so you don't have to get two um, different ingredients. So we're doing four to five slices of cucumber, all right, and we're honey syrup, which is just two parts honey, one part hot water. Um, you can also make it more strong or less, whatever you'd like. So we're doing one full ounce of that when it comes out. <laughs> all right, almost. 
most. You always want to get that meniscus at the top there so you're getting the exact right amounts. Okay. We're just going to slightly express those. Okay, and then we're going to add the one and a half ounces of the passion fruit puree. Again, I accidentally got syrup, so it might be a little sweet. All right, and then lime. Same again. All right. Now we're going to use our copper mug because it wouldn't be a mule without a mug, right? Okay, so. Shake it all up. All right, and we're going to strain that into our mug. You can add ice first if you'd like, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Okay. Fill that nice and full. And then, like I said, we've got the Q ginger beer, like a fever tree also makes a nice one. Just depends on how spicy you like it. Okay, there's that. And then just a simple lime wheel. And there's your meal. Okay. And for our last mocktail, we're gonna be doing a Onyx Coffee Old Fashioned. This is coming out of Onyx Coffee Labs in Arkansas, which was the 2016 uh, coffee shop of the year. Just a little tidbit. Um, so this one's pretty simple. Um, we're going to kind of focus on technique with this one. So we're going to use our cold brew again. So we're doing four ounces of that. So it's going to be two of our big guys here. Whoops, bartending is messy sometimes, isn't it? All right, and then we're doing a half ounce of Demerara syrup. Don't be scared, <laughs> Demerara is just a darker sugar. So you would just follow the same recipe uh, for simple syrup. I prefer three to one, uh, but you can do two to one or one to one, whatever, whatever you decide. All right, and then we're doing two dashes of our chocolate bitters. Um, if you really wanna go alcohol free, make sure you get Fee Brothers because other uh, chocolate bitters, actually bitters in general, usually have uh, uh, alcohol in contained. So we're gonna do three nice little drops of that. And we're gonna just stir this guy. So the technique for stirring, you're always gonna to wanna to keep the back of the spoon against your vessel. And that way the ice doesn't pop out too. And you get a nice even stir. Just that, all right. Normally for my old fashions, I like to you know use the big ice cube, but we don't have one of those. So we'll just use what we have. Part of the fun of it, right? Okay. And then we're just going to Drain that out. Mm. Okay, and just a simple Luxardo cherry for your garnish. I highly suggest you do stick with the Luxardos and not the weird ones that you see on top of ice cream sundaes or banana splits. So those are our five mocktails. Um, I hope you enjoyed this segment. If you have any questions or would like to share your own mocktail recipes, please email us at recdep, that's R-E-C-D-E-P-T, at coronado.ca.us. And I hope to see you again in a new segment. <laughs>